of rapper Yo Gotti confirmed the man killed outside a Hickory Hill event center is Gotti's brother. Memphis police identified him as 47-year-old Anthony Mims, also known as Big Jook. Mims was shot in the parking lot of Pernon's restaurant and event center. Another man who was shot is still alive but in the hospital. Tonight, police are looking for a white Ford Explorer SUV in connection with the shooting. It has dark tinted windows and black wheels. A witness told police they saw suspects in the SUV speeding away and surveillance video also shows this. If you recognize this vehicle or have any information, call Crime Stoppers at 901-528-CASH. Hey, what's up, y'all? Y'all know my slogan. I don't know it all, but I know what I've been through. Now, before we get into this video, please make sure you head on down to Instagram and follow us on our official Instagram page at hookah anonymous underscore. We're able to be a little more explicit, a little more uncensored, and share content freely without running the risk of having our channel terminated. So, once again, Make sure you head on down to Instagram and follow us on our official Instagram page at hookah anonymous underscore. We're almost at 100,000 subscribers. So if you like this video, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell so you're notified every time we drop new content. Now let's get into what you guys came here to see. Now, as most of you may already know by now, co-CMG CEO, who is also Yo Gotti's big brother, who goes by the name Big Jook, have lost his life in Memphis over this past weekend. Now, reports say that Big Jook was attending a repass event that was held for someone he considered his uncle that went by the name Eric Bovin, aka Las Vegas Eric. Eric Bovin was infamous in Memphis when it came to the streets and was considered kingpin status by the time he lost his life at the age 63 on December 31st, 2023. Yo Gotti's brother, along with Yo Gotti and family, attended a funeral and repass event that was held for Eric in Memphis, and this is where Big Jook ultimately lost his life at, after reports say he was targeted in an attack by unidentified suspects. Everything went down on 6385 Winchester Road, as Big Jook was sitting in his car getting ready to get out and attend events with friends and family, when reports say a car pulled up in the parking lot, the suspects getting out spraying up Big Jook's vehicle, striking him several times and getting away. Now, according to YouTuber Seti Nash, who was also covering this situation, he states that he received word from a very reliable source that Yo Gotti's mother was also in the car with Juk and could have lost her life while everything was going on. However, she managed to get out of the SUV and run away when everything was going down. Juk had security with him, according to sources, and that same security also was hit in the process. The security would go to the hospital in a private vehicle, where authorities say he arrived in critical condition but is expected to survive at this time. Now, everything happened Saturday, January 13, 2023, and no suspects have been identified. However, Memphis Deputy Chief Paul Wright has already notified the public that there's video surveillance of the suspects in their car. They just have to properly make it out of who's who and what's what. Now, with PRE and CMG's long-going feud, of course, as soon as news broke that Big Jit lost his life, the first thing people did was point fingers at Paper Route Empire. I told y'all in a previous video that Juk could have fell off a building or something, and the first thing people would have did was blame Paper Route Empire. Because that's how it is whenever a rapper or a public figure is beefing with someone in the spotlight. Now, although PRE members celebrated Juk's demise, whether they truly had something to do with it or not, there's a lot of backstory behind Juk and his affiliation with the streets. Many theories have begun circulating already, where some feel Big Juk already had beef with guys in Memphis due to his ties to the streets and being in the game. Some feel it was over allegedly him placing the bag on Dolph's head and not completing the payment to the people he orchestrated the attack with. And others do feel that it was just retaliation for Young Dolph. Now, all of those theories may or may not be true, but one thing we can all agree on is that Big Juk had no business in Memphis, moving in the open the way he was moving, knowing the type of attention that was on him. Could it have been his pride, or could it have been that he did have security with him so he did feel secure? We don't know, but one thing for sure is that Big Jook was aware of the issues that he had in Memphis, so why did he think it would be okay to move freely the way he did? 
Now, in the previous video we did covering this, I told y'all that I personally feel this situation had to be a hit due to how everything went down and the new information about the vehicle used in the attack just confirms exactly that. So aside from these guys doing this in broad daylight, doing it in the open in the parking lot where they knew it would be a lot of surveillance from these stores, we also found out that the car that these guys used was pretty much made into an unmarked car. So these guys knew what they were coming to do. An update has came out in this case already, and police have already identified the vehicle that was used in the attack. Unfortunately, the white Ford Explorer that was used was pretty much turned into an unmarked car after the suspects were removed the license plates from the vehicle. During the press conference Saturday evening after everything happened, Deputy Chief Paul Wright said police were analyzing video but did not have a suspect identified at that time, stating that it was also not clear if there was multiple shooters or just one, but a witness on the scene said suspects in the white SUV were responsible for the shooting that they described. The witness will go on to say that the vehicle was a white Ford Explorer with black wheels and dark tinted windows and images of it were captured on surveillance video. Once again, this just goes to prove that they knew what they was coming to do and was well prepared to do it and this attack was already premeditated. Black tinted windows of course so you can't see who's in the car and license plates taken off so they wouldn't be able to be traced knowing that the police was going to try and use surveillance to track the car down and get its plates. Now for y'all that are unfamiliar with why the plates was taken off, well it's because that's one of the tactics that police use to capture suspects in the commission of a crime by using plate readers to locate the vehicle associated with the suspects. This not only allows law enforcement to identify who the vehicle belongs to, but it's also a way for them to trace back where the car came from, at what time, and where it escaped to afterwards, followed by the time of that as well. So if there's no license plates to track, this makes matters a little more difficult in that situation. Now, if y'all remember, the deputy said they weren't sure if it was one suspect or multiple. However, the witness that pointed out the Ford Explorer also said that it was more than one suspect. And I kind of expected that because usually in these situations, from my observation, they aren't carried out alone. Whether it's two or more, it's always almost never really just one person involved in such a situation like this. Like you got to be a bad man if you want to go <laughs> to a situation like this by yourself to drive, shoot, get away, and all that. Yeah, you got to be a bad man. You got to be John Wick, you know? But as far as the license plates being taken off, I'm not sure how they were able to even get away with that in Memphis. And this makes me wonder how far did they travel to get to Winchester Road? Because where I'm from, you could barely get a half a mile without being stopped if you don't have plates on your car or if you have those paper Tim tags, right? They be on it. And it's due to reasons like this. Most criminals are doing attacks in what police call ghost cars where they don't have proper plates so they can't be traced back to anybody. So to avoid that, if you have temp tags, they're stopping you automatically. And if you don't have no plates at all, you definitely get stopped. So where did these guys travel from and how were they able to travel wherever they came from with no plates on their vehicle, right? So, so far, this is all they have released as evidence so far. I'm sure it's more to come. I wonder why didn't they release still photos of the suspects because I'm sure they have that on camera being that this happened in the open parking lot in broad daylight. I'm positive that if anything by this week, there should be more footage or pictures released if Memphis PD can't properly identify the suspects. Now on the flip side of everything, everybody got their own theories behind what happened and why this happened to Big Jook. But like I stated in both of the previous videos covering this, in that industry, there's a pattern that's starting to become very apparent when it comes to people losing their lives in that industry. A lot of fingers were starting to point back to CMG, Big Jook in particular when it came to Young Dolph's case, and the suspects who were involved. Govin Hernandez, who was a close associate of Jook's, was arrested for his role in the case, and that just goes to show how close the walls were starting to close in. It's almost like Jook or somebody had to go so Dolph's case could be blamed on that somebody. Right? And if it sounds crazy, I understand, but watch how suddenly they start proceeding with Dolph's case after all this time, and suddenly they start blaming everything on Jook. It's the same pattern. But anyway, that's pretty much it, y'all. Just want to update y'all on what they have released to the public as evidence so far. It isn't much right now, but it just goes to show that MPD is actually on it and um have something. So y'all jump in the comments and let me know what y'all think about this. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell so you're notified every time we drop new content. 
remember, as long as you keep on watching, I'm going to keep on dropping. And I'm out.